you for watching. This is Ari from Living on the Ocean. As you can see, I'm here with my hat on and my sweater. And I was in the sunshine. I'm swimming the ocean. It was beautiful in St. Martin. What are we doing here up north? towards Europe in that direction. That means here we have... It's cold, windy, and squally. Both is slamming. I think we sailed the wrong direction. We had such a fantastic time in St. Martin when we came there, to the only island that wanted to give us safe haven. We had to stay in quarantine for 10 days, but a place where we could anchor, we could watch this beautiful beach, this white beach and this fantastic turquoise water, where I rode around and put anchors so we were absolutely secure. We had turtles swimming around the boat, we had pelicans flying over, we met fantastic people in this very friendly island. We loved it up here, and it was an experience we would never forget. But we could not stay there in hurricane season. It would be too risky. No opportunity to go south to all those islands that were closed, as everybody normally does in hurricane season. No, we had to go back. Back across the Atlantic, back to Europe. After leaving St. Martin, the first days of our trip was beautiful and Cheryl has always enjoyed the beautiful weather, the blue water and watching dolphins. We saw them almost every day and it was like paradise for Cheryl being there on the front with her friends, with the dolphins that seemed to never get enough of playing around Twilight's bows, fishing, hunting, just enjoying life. Before we left, we checked the weather and we knew we had to sail up north for the first coming days to catch the west wind from a depression moving from the west to the east and travel with it in the direction of the Azores. That was the plan. And it looked like it was all going to work out so well. Enjoying those dolphins, taking pictures of the fantastic sunsets that we saw something that fascinates me the colors that appear in the sky and the reflection on the water looks like gold is laying on the roof of our little steering cabin the two of us were having a fantastic time but we did not know that actually we were not just together on the boat. And while I'm enjoying the sea and the sunsets, Cheryl all of a sudden called me and said, Ari, look, we have a stowaway on our boat. But no idea where it came from. Did it sneak in one of the shopping bags? In the Canaries? Or did it come from Portugal? Or did it come on board in St. Martin? A little gecko. But there are no flies on our boat. There's nothing we can feed him in this massive ocean. And after that day, we never saw him again. We feel sad for our little friend that sailed with us probably across a whole ocean. To sail the ocean back to Europe from west to east is not as easy as sailing it with the trade winds from Europe to the Caribbean. So I make a little drawing of America and the Caribbean and I want to explain you our tactics trying to get back so you understand what happened or actually what didn't happen. If this is the Azores and there's Bermuda and we are here in St. Martin, we need to go northeast to make it to the Azores. It would be nice if there would be a southwesterly wind or a west wind yeah, from America towards the east in Europe. To get winds like that, 
for us we need actually depressions that come from America and that turn against the clock and that travel over the Atlantic Ocean from west to east that will be a perfect scenario to bring us back to Europe making use of the west wind in the bottom of those depressions higher up north those depressions have east winds so and they will be against you on the sides the depression will blow from the north to the south or from the south to the north which could be used as well but on the bottom you are the safest there are the northeast trade winds that we can use to go up north and then take the bottom of those depressions towards the Azores many times there's a high above the Azores and that actually spins the wind the other way around and in the center of that Azore high there would probably be not much wind at all and for that we took a lot of fuel with us but it did not work out that way for us so let me draw the situation of what happened if there's the Azores again there was a massive high above and around the Azores bringing a northeast wind and a northeast swell over this part of the Atlantic it made it very difficult to move in the direction of Europe with the winds and the swell from that direction and some boats that tried it went actually back to the Caribbean and preferred staying in hurricane season than beating up two and a half meter waves a big front was north of us so we went up for a couple of days right towards that front from which we hoped to get the west winds I take another pen to draw a route while we were going up there we got a phone call from our router telling us not to go any higher north because there would be 50 knots of wind in the gusts in that front he advised us to go east and stay in the area where there was not much wind but with the swell we were just flapping our sails and getting crazy on a little trimaran that wants some wind to move going farther south would bring us back in the trade winds and back to the Caribbean this was no option at all but continuing east with the wind getting straight on our nose would mean beating 1500 miles upwind towards Horta no possibility for our trimaran and I wanted to go to the depression up north trying to find west wind above the center of this high pressure system so we discussed with Charlie and we went up north and we took on the big front the big dark clouds and we sailed through it in lots of wind above it we hope to get west wind soon but the low of this high system did not want to play along and for days we went much farther north than we planned on this trip too far north to be safe if a big depression would come again from America endless little SMS text went to the satellite system to talk with Charlie for other options but there was no other option I couldn't believe it no west winds in the Atlantic unless I go up so far north that I did not longer feel safe if a bigger depression would come but it simply seemed no other option I had to trust a man that could see the weather from his place much better than I could see with my little satellite text communicator knowing now how well he was routing us and how much time and effort he was putting into us to go up north not longer with the other boats the normal monohulls that could beat up wind much easier than us we went north and he routed us to the squalls to the winds to the no winds to the crazy weather system of 2020 the squalls with their dark clouds and one part lifted up where the wind came underneath the clouds with high speed and the heavy rains the thunder the lightning and the rainbows it became such a dramatic trip for us with all the different weather patterns from high winds high rains to no wind to absolutely blue outs the great speed that our trimer and did well she wasn't ready yet no winches just trying to find ways to get the sails tight enough altering things on the boat to get it to go higher into the wind seeing her going over 30 knots just sticking those bows straight to the next waves and hiding away underneath sails when it was raining to stay dry and to stay warm I could see hardly any slack in the stays and knew and saw 
that she was much stiffer than I thought she already was. The front beam that I still wanted to change took the forces much better than expected. And the whole boat performed above and beyond my expectations. We also figured out that she sailed much better as long as she gave her enough sail so she could really lean well into the waves and with the highest speed she actually felt much nicer to sail than when she was rocked left and right with not enough canvas up. She was designed with beams that could be taken off the hull so she could be taken apart but to those little gaps that were sealed as good as possible with this massive amounts of water slamming into it some water creeped in every day and we had a hard job keeping our mattresses dry on the inside the sailing was actually very awesome if you look back at it now at the video the speeds were great over 30 knots but being out there in the middle of the Atlantic and going so far up north much farther than what I felt safe it was learning to trust the strength of the boat, the strength of Twilight, the way she was designed, how light she was and how easy she would speed up and go over the waves. The next bit of video may not be the best quality in sound, but it was filmed right there at the moment. And I thought it would be nice to hear how it really was when we were out there. Waking up in the morning, we're running a bit on the engine because there was no wind. And guess why? I guess the front has arrived. Oops, that looks very dark. I guess there's some rain in there. I prefer this beautiful sunset. Doing this, I was silly. And I was just hit by this swinging boom because I tried to make this fantastic little bit of video. That was a hard bang on my head. That's how quickly things go wrong. But I'm still okay. Been up all night. Not much wind. Going into our next front. I think I need to read for sale. Thank you for watching Living on the Ocean. Too much happened on this Atlantic trip back to Europe to put it into one episode. And I hope you subscribe to the channel to see the next part. And to hear more of the squalls, the blue outs and how a helicopter wanted to lift me off my boat in 2016 to abandon my brand new boat after Portuguese man-of-war landed on my legs when I was repairing a rudder in the water.